Today we're returning to Zimbabwe. We're not looking uh, at the Makoyu well, which is now Spud. Uh, we're going to take a look at the Baobab well, and it's based on material in the public domain that was released by Invictus Energy. People wonder why are we doing this series? Well, we've been following Invictus for, for quite some time and uh, we'll wish them every success. We've got no, uh, no real axe to grind. We just present the technical data. Make of it what you will. Please, add your comments down below. Let's start a debate. Let's see. Do you agree with our assessment? Do you disagree with our assessment? Whatever you think, please leave comments down below. The drilling of the Baobab prospect in Zimbabwe. Will it be a hit or a miss? We're returning to Zimbabwe and uh, looking at the Invictus Energy Two Well Exploration Program. We've already done the video on the Makoyu prospect. The second well in the sequence, well, Invictus tell us that it's going to be at Baobab. We're going to take a look at that. So Invictus is an Australian explorer. It's listed on the Australian Stock Exchange. Uh, the claim there is that uh, they're drilling for 4.3 billion barrels of unrisked conventional gas condensate. Well, we see it as being somewhat different to them. So here's the prospect targeting six horizons, all stacked. Problem is that the shallower ones, for them to work, rely on hydrocarbons escaping from the ones underneath. Now, could there be multiple hydrocarbon source rocks? Well, even if there are, can we get them mature? There's a whole range of ages, as you can see there, from tertiary right through Mesozoic, but majority of the section is actually Triassic in age. And the source rock is really that uh, lower angua. Not only have you got to generate migrate hydrocarbons, you have to keep it in there. So traps got to be preserved for perhaps tens or even hundreds of millions of years. Risk, we'll use the ERCE chance of success numbers here, 12 to 14%. And that's for any individual horizon. It is high risk. It's a one in six to a, a one in eight chance. This is what you end up with, is when you look at all the parameters, you end up with a likelihood of a probability distribution, which is a, a log normal probability. And the mathematical reason is actually described underneath. What you see is this is the chances of uh, the field size. Now, a 4.3 billion barrel, there is a chance, but it is such a small, improbable outcome that it really should be dismissed. When we talk about the chance of success, of chance of geological success, the inverse is the geological risk. This is only to get you on this graph. So it's only to find a very, very small sized field. So there is a very small chance that you're going to get onto this graph. And then once on the graph, where the distribution is going to end up is probably going to be a lot smaller than the quoted. 4.3 billion barrels. In layman's terms, chances of a 4.3 billion barrel discovery, well, they are very, very small. It is incredibly unlikely. I think we reviewed the stratigraphy last time and noted that it was a particularly sandy overburden. But what's interesting on the seismic line is you can see these potential leak paths here right up from the lower angle, but wherever you have them, you can see that there are leaks and yet there's no surface seeps, non-recorded or reported, to the best of our knowledge. Now, does that mean that we've got an excellent seal? Well, this faulting is very, very recent, very, very close to the surface, and we think that that will have compromised any trapping potential. So the prospect itself, let's look in a bit more detail. Here's a map that was presented by Invictus Energy recently. There's the link there. It was a YouTube video. And they referred to it as the String of Pearls, a basin margin play. So here's uh, Makoyu, which is uh, now drilling. And this is the next well in the sequence. It's going to be Baobab. They've chosen that ahead of all these other leads and prospects that uh, are shown on this map. Now, the sequence is shown here. So uh, the plan is uh, that the two wells will cost somewhere in the region of about $26.5 million. And uh, Makoyu will be followed essentially by just moving the, the rig itself from the Makoyu site about 10 kilometers south to the Baobab site. Invictus Energy talk about analogues and they talk about the Albertine Graben in Uganda and the Lokachar Basin in Kenya. And uh, indeed, you know, we can see this idea, this string of pearls, and, and in the case of Lokachar, very clearly related to the, the basin boundary fault. Here's the string of pearls in the Invictus acreage. Now, Please note that all these maps are at different scales and we're not trying to infer anything about the size by comp comparing these maps at, at different scales. 
What we do want to do, though, is have a look at the analogues that Invictus proposed. And, and you can see here in the Albertine Graben, we've got the Waraga well. And in the Lokichar Basin in Kenya, we've got Ngamia. In the case of Waraga, uh, you can see that uh, here's all the beds dipping up and bringing any oil that, that is being generated in the basin, bringing it up towards Waraga 1. Similarly, at Nagamia, you can see all the beds bringing any migrating hydrocarbons out of the basin up towards the discovery. By contrast, here's Baobab. Pretty much any horizon generating hydrocarbons, if there is any hydrocarbon generation from source rocks in these intervals, it's all migrating away from Baobab. In fact, we doubt if there's any mature source rock within the Baobab catchment. This is the axis of the basin kind of shown approximately through here. Now, even with tilting, the axes of basins don't tend to move around too much. You know, the dips on the flanks change, but it hasn't changed much through uh, geological time. And what you can see, this is the feature that's being drilled here. There's certainly some good dip here, and perhaps it's some reverse dip in this direction, locally in the shallow section. We see this structure is being formed very late with very recent faults. It's probably related to this ramp here in this basin bounding fault. This is what's uh, led to the, the formation of this, of this local anomaly. There's another reason that we need to look at. And let's take the case where Makoyu, well, we call it a gatekeeper structure. So it basically is guarding the way into Baobab. Let's take the scenario where Makoyu is absolutely full to the brim and it's got 4.3 billion barrels of oil. Well, what's going to happen? Well, I think you can see on this map, the spill is actually to the northwest and towards outcrop. It is highly improbable for hydrocarbons to spill from Makoyu into Baobab. Another prospect that looks kind of interesting down here, this is what's referred to as the Mopane prospect, but all it is is a good lead. It's based on really perhaps a little bit of lick up at the end of this seismic line. The uh, seismic database here, you can see that's been controlled by this square of data, these seismic lines, which I think is the original mobile 1990s uh, shoot. This is the uh, the more recent Invictus shoot, but only part of the line goes over. If we look at the other prospects on here, we can see that you know these are right in the deeper center of the basin, so hardly the best place to, to go looking for hydrocarbon. And these, well, they've got very, very little relief because you can't see any real changes in the color scheme to, to highlight where, where the uh, structure is. These are immature all the way along, and Baobab, well, why was it chosen? The license agreement remains unsigned. Makoyu's spud, but um, the act is still going through Parliament, so it hasn't been agreed. The overall assessment, our assessment, Makoyu is a high-risk prospect. Baobab is an extremely high-risk prospect. Too often, this 4.3 billion barrel of oil Makoyu bombshell is just left hanging out there, and we just feel that that is total hype. The Makoyu well, well, we'll know the answer in 50 to 60 days, and for Baobab, it'll be a couple of months later. We wish Invictus every success. Uh, we know it is hard to get wildcats drilled in new basin but in the case of this um, what's happened what lessons can we learn well, why two wells well we suspect with the costs of mobilizing and demobilizing a rig to and from zimbabwe that it's hugely expensive and, and the only way that uh, could get a rig in here i believe the rig came from songo songo island in tanzania was to actually propose a two well program but you need to have two prospects that are drill ready perhaps the thing to do is to slow down follow a conventional oil and gas exploration approach sign the license, shoot your seismic, try and farm it out, drill the well if merited. Why Baobab? Well, I think there's some other factors here. The well can be drilled by just moving the rig 10 kilometers south, leave the camp in place, benefit from a new road. There's nowhere else to go. So again, all the best to Invictus for a safe and hopefully successful drilling campaign, but we're not sure. Express your support or object in the comments below. We'll uh, only moderate those comments if they're abusive or off topic. Otherwise, you be the judge whether we're right, whether the operator's right. Most likely neither of us are right. We'll know in a few months' time. So the share price is Invictus. Well, we followed it last time. We thought we'd put it back in. This is where we recorded the video. Today's date being the 22nd of September, 2022. We do not recommend buying or selling stocks. We've no position in Invictus, nor its partners, nor affiliates, or, or anybody involved in this venture. We purely make a technical assessment of the material collated from a variety of public sources. 
If you want investment advice, please consult experts. If you simply want to gamble, try the lottery. So there you have it. Our opinion of uh, Baobab, based on our technical assessment, somewhat different to the operators. We see it's very high risk with a very low chance that it might work. You may agree, you may not agree, but if you are making speculative investments, seek technical professional help. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel. Give us a thumbs up. Ring that bell. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.